This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on his own. What a pleasure to have Harlem Eubank. Good to see you, Bobby. On fight week, um, 24 hours or so till fight night. How's life? Life's good, man. We're here now. I'm excited to, to be back. Um, back to business, as the show is called, and we're back to it now. So um, I'm happy it's here and I'm ready to go in there and put on a performance tomorrow. Yeah, you're a long way from home. I always find it quite cold down Brighton, even around this time with a little sea breeze, but tell you what, mate, it's chilly up here. Do you cold. feel a long way from home? The cold hits different up here, bro. It's a, it's, it's, it's a different level up here. So, um, But it's nice. I like Newcastle. It's a small little town. You know, some nice cafes. You can walk around. It's, it's a cool place. You know, I feel at home here as well. I've, I've fought up here before. So um, familiar surroundings, but, um, you know... Nothing beats at home in Brighton. Small little cafes. I think your enjoyment of Newcastle is a bit different to my <laughs> enjoyment of Newcastle, I'll say that. Um, you must enjoy fighting away from home. Obviously, you're not a million miles away from home, but I guess getting away, being in a hotel, just being in a different city, and obviously tomorrow night you get to showcase yourself in front of people that might not have seen you in person. Um, so I guess there's like a different enjoyment. So that obviously being at home, Brighton, walking out, your fans... Your family as well is brilliant, but a different enjoyment tomorrow night. Yeah, so it's um, you know a different location, a chance to show my skills in front of you know a new audience that might not have seen me live before. So that's uh, that's exciting as well, and um, you know I enjoy being in different places sometimes to get that opportunity to to um, you know show my, show my skills to different different people. Yeah, what's fight week been like for you so far? I look around and we got a couple of the boys ready to chop it up. On undisputed, I got a feeling Jamie Conlon is shit on this. <laughs> Sorry, he's yeah. going with Roy Jones Jr. there, so he, you know, he best pull this off <laughs> against Canelo. Um, Don't want to do the legend any injustice. <laughs> That's it. You've got to um, represent it, correctly. It just looks like that little kind of the unit that you've got. Um, the fact that although there's business to do tomorrow, you can kind of have fun, enjoy it, and like relax at, at the yeah. same time and fight week. Got a great team. I'm surrounded by good people, and um, you know they help take. The, the the pressures of fight week off so you can relax, chill out and um, just enjoy the week and go into the fight ready to perform. Have you had a little go on Undisputed? Yeah, I haven't got the hang of it yet. I've had one go. I don't think I, I got the uh, control manuals or, or one of them was keeping it from me. Um, <laughs> are, you much, are you much of a gamer like in general? Uh, I like the old game, but uh, I don't spend too much time on it. But I like the old game, especially especially the fighting games, you know. We need another fight night, Beck. Fight night is the OG. Yes, yeah, the original, isn't it? You can't beat the OG. I will say there is a certain someone who's a character on fight night that, sorry, on Undisputed that your name has been linked with, Conor Ben. I was just wondering if you've created yourself and perhaps created a scenario where you and Conor Ben come to blows and Undisputed and uh, you get the outcome that you desire. I think it would be better in real life. Um, Me too, in all fairness. computer, so... Um, we're just waiting for that encounter in real life and, and uh, I look forward to that. Things to do first. Um, Nuri Erdogan, what can you tell people about him for those who aren't too aware? He's a solid operator. Um, you know, very, very good record and never been stopped. You know, a tough guy that comes to, comes to fight every single time. And, um, you know, first fight at 147 at welterweight. It's, uh, you know, a very solid test. Yeah. When you say he's never been stopped, the tone that you said that in sounds like there's a challenge. Uh, it's always it always presents a challenge when you know when someone comes comes along with that with that tag. So um, it would be nice if you were the guy to be the first. Hey, that's it. it could well be. Um, you know, I done it last time out against Timo. Um, you know, the German champion. So let's uh, let's let's do it this time against the former French champion. I feel like you're just trying to tick off some English rivalries. Take a German out, <laughs> take a Frenchman out, kind of try and do the country proud or something. Hey, yeah. you know, I represent Britain, Great Britain, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll wave the flag. Dealing smoke on our behalf. I like <laughs> it. Um, have you got, obviously, the focus is tomorrow night, of course, and Erdogan. Have you got a plan in your mind, one that you've spoken about with... Jamie, the Sowlands and whatnot. Have you got one that you're looking at and going, ideally, if tomorrow goes how we want it to go, this is exactly how 2025 should look? Yeah, definitely. It needs to be 
you know, it needs to be a busy year with with big fights. Um, you know, the, my first fight, you know, after this, obviously I'm fully focused on Friday night. You know, tomorrow I'm going to put in a performance and, um, you know, we've got big plans for 2025. We, we're going towards, you know, real big fights and I don't want to say too much because we've got big plans and I don't want to reveal anything um, just yet. Just want to focus on tomorrow night, do the business, and um, we've got an exciting year ahead that the fans can look forward to. Well, it's my job to try and drag something out of you, but I got a feeling like, yeah, I've got to be a closed book. You know, sometimes yeah, you can give away so. too much. I feel and like we're uh, actually sitting opposite a chessboard. I feel like I might have to <laughs> try and play a little bit of mind chess it's to a, try and drag something out of it's you. It's a tactical game, um, and uh, you know that's that's what's exciting about about the sport of boxing, you know. Big opportunities can open up and you, you have to you have to flow with it. You have to um just be ready for the opportunities and you know, after tomorrow night I'll be ready for all of them opportunities coming my way. Yeah, I guess there is method in not kind of shouting from the rooftops what your plans are. Um obviously haven't been as active as you would have liked recently after getting some momentum behind you. Um so I guess do you feel like because you haven't been as active if you also just start throwing out loads of suggestions, calling for loads of people's heads, people will be like, well, hold on. You haven't actually <laughs> laced the glove up since. That's it. Well, then. we've done that. And, you know, I've had a year out of the ring since since doing, uh, you know, since mentioning names, since calling for the big fights. So um, now it's about getting in there, doing the business, you know, letting my hands do the talking like I did last time and, um, you know, setting up those those big fights for real, you know. Yeah. I know Eddie Hearn said today that the negotiations or conversations rather have begun back up with obviously Chris and Connor. Um, are you in, I don't want to call it a weird situation, but of course you and Connor, as we mentioned, is a massive fight, one you would want, I know one he would want as well. Um, but I guess you kind of don't want to wish negotiations to go badly for Chris. Yeah, I wish. So I, it's I, like a... Yeah. Well, I wish, is it, I wish is it a the, bit of an I wish situation? the best for Chris. It's a, you know, it's a great opportunity. It's obviously a big money fantasy fight, um, you know, and an easy, you know, an easy earner for for Chris. Um, and um, yeah, but it's you know, it's it's not a real fight. Um, obviously, the levels are completely different. Chris is up at one sixty, and you know, if Conor Ben's a one four seven fighter, then I'm. I'm uh, I'm the type of contender that he needs to fight at 147. Yeah. Just in terms of Chris, I want to dive a little bit. I know, obviously, you'd have seen the interview that he'd done with another media outlet that's getting a lot of attention when it comes to senior and kind of wanting to, to reconcile. Um, you know, I don't, don't want to push too hard because I guess family ties are family ties, but I just want to know what your thoughts were on, on what Chris said and, and that situation. Because obviously, I know senior's been around your career, been around juniors, is insanely influential in yeah. British boxing. Just kind of want to know what your take was, having seen what, what Chris said. I think their relationship, you know, everything can be mended, um, you know, and I'd like to see it done behind closed doors. I think it can be one of them things that's, you know, done just between them. And, um, you know, without the kind of being in public view. So um, that's that's kind of my take on it. I, I, think, I think and hope that, you know, they can... Um, mend their relationship. Yeah. I do feel like, not that anything needed to be added, but I do feel like alongside Junior, Conor Ben and Neymar, there needed to be a little bit of senior in that ring. <laughs> Listen, it's not the same without senior. Um, you know. Although Neymar was, who let nice <laughs> what a random surprise? I don't know. It's, it's great. Uh, it's great. You know, it's great entertainment, but, you know, in boxing, in the UK and around the world, you know, Chris Eubank Senior in boxing is something that's necessary to put his his flavour, you know, into the boxing world. Every when he came back, everyone was you know ec ecstatic to see him back doing what he does best. And um, yeah, he's he's great for for TV. He's great for for boxing um, in the UK and around the world. Yeah, yeah, we love a bit of Senior. We do. We love seeing him on TV screens in around the boxing, so you are exactly right. Um, in terms of next year, I 
spoke to Nissa earlier and he said, like, we will go back to Brighton. And I know bringing a massive fight to Brighton is something on your agenda. Um, but if you got, I guess you would have dreams, sir. And I'm not just talking about Riyadh because I know that would be something you'd want. Like America, maybe somewhere away on European soil, just fighting outside of the UK and making Definitely. 2025 kind of the, the wider audience outside of Britain known. Yeah, I, I, when I first, when I first uh, had a conversation with... Um, Keller, you know, first coming in into Wasserman, we spoke a lot about America, and you know, one of my dreams as well was to fight at Madison Square Garden in in New York. You know, I've I've watched my close friend Mick Conlon, I've watched him fight there over and over again, and it's a beautiful place. The atmosphere is amazing. It's it's a real classic, old school boxing venue, and um, you know, there's a lot of history there, and I'd love to make a debut there and you know introduce myself to to the New York um audience over there as well. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get to see Mick fight at MSG, but from those who did and what I've heard and even watching it through TV, it looked unbelievable. Yeah. Just that, how good was it? Them nights were incredible. Some of the some of the best boxing nights I've been to personally, you know, to watch live boxing. Um yeah. You know, I've I've got a box there in in the near future for sure. So I'm gonna get on to Cala. I remember the first time I went to New York with my family, just uh, on a random one. Um, popped into like an Irish bar, and all the women behind the bar were wearing Mick Conlon t-shirts. <laughs> and I was like, shit, this was like, I mean, a big deal for us back home and obviously in Ireland. I was like, mate, this was like a big deal. So it must have felt like a, a huge event for New York at the time, not 100%. just for us kind of back home watching on. Yeah, 100%. Mick, you know, he's got a great audience in Ireland at home and, and in New York. So it was great to go out there and experience his fight weeks out there and soak it all in. And, you know, you, you take on board that experience, um, you know, for the future when, when you uh, go into them nights. So I can't wait. MSG, it, was, uh, it felt like the home of boxing. So, yeah, I'd love to, love to fight there real soon. Yeah, who knows when I go there in five years, maybe the barmaids will be wearing Harlem Eubank t-shirts. <laughs> you never know. Um, just a final one. I've got to get your take on this because, I mean, we must have asked everyone under the sun. What did you think of Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? Uh, I th Do you know what? I watched the I watched the series promoting it on Netflix. It was sick. I'm yeah, I thought lie. it was. I thought they'd well, done Netflix, it. That's Netflix, right? They know how yeah, to do that. They know how to do it. The production, they completely nailed it. They built the storyline that, you know, Mike was was still this dangerous uh was still as dangerous as he was in his prime and obviously everything is achieved you know you can't not buy into that you know especially as a um especially as someone not involved in in the sport like the the storytelling of it was class and um probably a lot of lessons to be learned in terms of how to promote a fight like that as well you know for everyone um in terms of the actual fight, I, you know, I didn't watch the actual fight because I wasn't, I wasn't engaged to watch the, you know, Tyson at his age take shots to the head from a, a younger guy, and um, but I think they they both showed respect to each other. You know, I think Tyson pulled some shots, and I think Jake probably, you know, pulled some as well. So it was an entertaining night. It was a night where they brought different crowds together. You know, old school boxing guys that grew up on Mike Tyson in his prime, you know, who spearheaded boxing and brought people into the sport of boxing. And then Jake Paul who's come from the, the YouTube audience and bringing young kids in to, to see some boxing against a guy they would, would know from being so dangerous in his prime. It was one of them, one of them events that brought a lot of people to watch the sport of boxing, I think so. I think, you know... It's, it's not a real boxing fight, but in terms of entertainment, in terms of bringing people to the sport, and you know, I'm just happy that Mike got well paid out of it, you know, because maybe he didn't keep everything that he amassed from the actual sport of boxing. So for him to get an opportunity where you know he'll have money to take care of himself, you know, going forward. Is, that's a, that's a beautiful thing, but I'm glad he didn't take any dangerous shots to the head, and um, he, they both came out safely, earning a lot of money. So in 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 that sense, 
Fair play to them. Yeah, mate, absolute bank robbery <laughs> job. Absolute <laughs> bank robbery job. Um, Harlem, really appreciate your time. Um, just a final one. I don't know if... Are you a prediction man? Have you ever done predictions um, pre-fights? Like exact predictions? Exact predictions. Not. I feel like I've asked you and you've just gone, look, you're going to see me win and we're kind of cutting it. I, I like to kind of... Uh, people always bring something different, you know? Some people... Some people come at you, some people sit off, so you you never know what to expect. But based on their approach, will kind of determine uh, the outcome of the fight. So there's a lot of variables. I don't like to predict too much. Um, I just like to get in there and, and do the job in style.